service in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the, the, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We cannot do anything without God. And we are here because of him. And so as you are here, I want you to just begin to thank God. Open your mouth and thank God. Bless the name of the Lord. Tell God, the psalmist says that, bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. What has God done for you? Begin to thank God and tell God that God bless. My, uh, my soul magnifies you. My soul gives praise to you. There's so many things that happens in a day. There's so many things that goes on in a day. And, and we, we just w- don't want to take anything for granted, what we have. The fact that you're able to eat. The fact that you're able to walk. The fact that you're able to breathe. It is a blessing. It is a grace of God. So give thanks to God in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. You are rich because Jesus Christ took your place. And made you rich. So thank God in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we are so much grateful unto you in the name of Jesus. What shall we render unto the Lord for all your goodness, for all his kindness, for all his love, for all his mercies? In the name of Jesus, God takes you out of trouble. He takes you out of trouble. He speaks on your behalf. In the name of Jesus, God has been the Lord of our life in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you all the praise in the name of Jesus. We magnify your holy name. There is no one like you, and there is none that can be compared unto you. We even thank you in the name of Jesus. On Friday, God Almighty, when the rains were coming down, you stopped the rains. That our sister will have her wedding in the mighty name of Jesus. And I'm so much grateful unto you. I thank you in the mighty name of Jesus for the lives that were touched, the souls that were touched. In the name of Jesus, see Kalabarosi in Telegebe. So much grateful unto you, Kalabazon Telelebe. In the name of Jesus, we give you all the praise. There is no one like you. No one can be compared unto you. Among the gods, who is like you? You are glorious in holiness, fearful in praise, always doing wonders. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. So much grateful unto you in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. To worship you will live in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God Almighty. As the deer panted for waters, so our soul also pants after you in the name of Jesus. We're so much grateful unto you, God Almighty. Thank you for putting that desire and that hunger in us. Blessed are you. I, blessed is the man who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for he shall be filled. God has given us his blessedness so much that we hunger and thirst after righteousness. Not because we, or, or because we want to do it by ourselves, but the Holy Spirit enables us to do it. In the name of Jesus, because the flesh is prone to sin. But the Spirit of God in you enables you to do what you could never have done in the name of Jesus. Thank God in the name of Jesus. Thank God for Jenny mercies. Thank God for what he has done for you. Thank God for your salvation in Christ Jesus. Because the time is coming that Jesus will come again. But because you've given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, he's coming for you. He's coming for you. He's coming for your family. He's coming for your people, the children of God. Thank God that you are part of it. Thank God that your name has been written in the book of life. Thank God that you will not be left out when Jesus Christ comes. That is the hope that the Apostle Paul tells us to really encourage ourselves with it. That we should never think that, oh, uh, we are hopeless. No, we have hope in Jesus Christ. Father, we are so much grateful unto you. Our hope and our confidence is in you, Lord Jesus. Our hope and our confidence is in you, Jesus Christ. We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you so much. I want you to pray and tell God that God, I want you to visit me. I will have a divine encounter with you in every aspect of the service, whether it is praise and worship, 
offering, communion, the word of God, and uh, the prayers, everything that we do, help me, Lord God of mine, to connect with you. The Bible says that your spirit and the spirit of God agrees that you are children of God. You want to have agreement in the spirit. That as you are here, your spirit will testify that you are having constant communication, not distraction. Because you can be in church and be distracted so much that your spirit man is not connecting. And that is doing yourself a whole, you are doing yourself a disservice. If you come to church and you are not connected, you are doing yourself a disservice. Because angels are discharged here, the Holy Spirit is here, God himself is here with us. So pray and tell God, God, I want to connect, I want to tap, I want to receive from you in the name of Jesus. Pray that the spirit man will be active, will be quickened. Quicken me, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Calabrados que te legebe. In the name of Jesus, Father, I pray that God Almighty, that we will connect, we will connect, we will connect, we will connect. Our spirit will agree with your spirit. We will have that agreement in the spirit. In the name of Jesus, there will not be any disservice over here. No one will be here and go the same. No one will come here and go the same. I pray that sick will be healed in the name of Jesus. Even during worship, the healing will be happening in the mighty name of Jesus. Chains will be broken during the worship time as we are singing and praising God. Father, there will be deliverance in the name of Jesus. People who never knew you, Jesus, will give their life to Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you that God Almighty, any kind of disturbances in their spirit, we come against it. I pray and I shut any spirit of pride in the name of Jesus. Now, God Almighty, not, none of the hearts here, God, will be exalted against the knowledge of God. No, in the name of Jesus. But let the presence of God be made manifest in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, the Bible says that when the sower sowed the seed, some fell on the roadside. I pray that God, none of the seed will fall at the roadside in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, none of the seed will fall at the roadside in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, it will fall on fertile ground, fertile soil, that the hope of God will be in us, knowing that a time is coming that when we and no more here will be with our Lord Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, for being with us. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. We have prayed in Jesus' name, amen. It is time for us to worship the Lord God Almighty. I want you to worship the Lord with all your heart as the worship team come. Uh, we're going to open our whole heart our heart, our minds, our soul, and our spirit. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath do what? Praise the Lord. Do you have breath in you? Yes. You're going to praise God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Welcome, Active Word Church. Um, the first song that we're going to sing to worship God is called Jesus at the Center. Um, so as we are worshiping him, I want you all to just, you know, close your eyes and envision Jesus. Envision him at the center of everything. Forget about every problem. Forget about every obstacle. Forget about everything, but just keep your eyes on him. When I sing this song, when I look at the words to the song, it, it ministers to me because from beginning to the end, He is there. It'll always be Him. So in this life that we're going through on a day-to-day -day basis, it's just a beautiful reminder to keep Him at the center and keep your eyes focused on Him. Amen. Amen. Jesus the center of it all. Jesus at the center of it all. From beginning to the end, it'll always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Bye. 
to worship him just lift up his name father we exalt you oh god you are worthy to be praised you are worthy to be exalted we thank you because you are at the center of it all and father we know that as long as we keep our eyes focused on you that there's no way we can fall as long as we keep our our our, our um, path aligned to you there's no way we can go off track Father, we thank you. Just lift up your voice and worship him. We give you all the glory, O oh God. You are at the center of everything. You are at the center of our lives. You are at the center of our finances. You are at the center of our occupations. You are at the center of everything, O oh Lord. We exalt you, Jesus. You deserve all the glory. You deserve all the praise. From beginning to the end, it will always be you, O oh Lord. That is our prayer. That from beginning to the end, we will keep our eyes our, our minds, our spirits focused on you, oh God. Father, Lord, please be at the center of us, oh God. Father, let us stay focused on you. Let us stay focused on you, oh God, all the days of our lives, Jesus. Father, Lord, we need you. Father, we need you, Jesus. We need you, oh Lord. Father, if you are not in the center, oh Lord, then our whole life is disarray, oh God. In your word, it says that unless you build a house, vain are the people who spend their time to build it. Unless you watch a city, oh God, vain is the watchman staying awake to watch it, Lord. If you are not in our our lives, oh God, if you are not directing our paths and we are lost, oh God. Father, we need you. Father, we need you. Stay in the center of our lives, oh God. May we stay focused on you, oh Lord. Despite all the distractions that this world may bring, the world is very good at bringing so many distractions our way. But Lord, we focus on you. We have made up our minds today to be focused on you and not to let the cares of this world distract us from your presence, oh God. Father, we thank you. Father, we give you all the glory, Jesus. Jesus, you're the lover of my soul.
let you go. Taking me, taking me oh, 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 from the miry clay. He set my feet upon the rock. And now I know.
from the miry clay. You set my feet upon the rock, and now I know I love you. I need you. Though my world may fall, I'll never let you go.
us love Jesus? How many of us love Jesus? How many of us worship him? How many of us claim that Jesus is our God? I want you to sing from the top of your lungs, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Congregation. Jesus, I love you. I love you, Jesus. All our voices in one just raising up to heaven. Say, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. a testimony in your hearts that testifies that Jesus is good and he is worthy of our love he is worthy of our devotion he is worthy of it all he is worthy of everything and anything that we could ever give Jesus we love you Jesus we exalt your holy name thank you Jesus just want to thank you this evening this morning we just exalt you God and we declare that we love you Lord because of who you are because of how great you are the God who created heaven and earth the Lord who makes the wise to be dumb and make the dumb to be wise we may not be able to understand the depth of your ways but father we know what you did for us because of your love for us and because of that we just want to say thank you and we also want to return that love back by giving our lives to you Jesus Father we thank you Lord as we have worshipped you may your name be glorified may this be a sweet and acceptable taste unto your taste buds oh God a sweet fragrance to your nostrils oh Lord Father, we thank you. We thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen.
So we will be taking the offering now. Um, so if everyone can please gather um, their offering and their tithes unto God. Um, so when we are giving unto God, it is a blessing and it prolongs um, it prolongs our days. It makes sure that the devourer will not take from us. Um, so let us just bring that forth um, and be a blessing unto the house of God in the name of Jesus. So as you are doing that, we will sing and our beautiful sister, Dr. Esther, will be helping us today by the grace of God. Amen and amen.
this offering. Thank you, O oh Lord, for your children who have um, blessed this church and have given unto you, O oh God. Father, Lord, we soak every offering, we soak every tithe in the blood of Jesus. Father, may you keep the devourer away from them, O oh Lord. And Father, as they have given, O oh Lord, may you multiply it in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, as they have given, O oh God, we, we, I pray in the name of Jesus, O oh Lord, that whatever their um, current condition is, whatever they may be going through, O oh Lord, that you will see them through in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, for those who are unable to give, O oh Lord, may you bless them, O oh God, so that they may be able to be a blessing unto you, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, O oh Lord. We pray and we commit the rest of the service into your hands. Father, may you have your way in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, may you speak a word unto us. May we have an encounter with you and may our lives be transformed, O oh God, for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. 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 God bless you so much. Yes, um, by the grace of God, we are able to do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Amen. And today, the service is a little bit packed. We're going to do communion, but so before the communion, I'll ask Malisha to come here. She's going to give us the announcement. And then after the announcement, as the announcement is going on, communion should be passed around and right after the announcement we do our communion service amen sure I've seen you before, but welcome everyone um, to Active Word Church. Um, this morning, before um, I'll give the announcement to um, so that everyone can know what we have going on in the church. So, first announcement is on Mondays through Fridays from 6 a.m. to 7 a.m., we have morning prayer. And morning prayer is on Zoom, so you can join um, in your home, in your bed, uh, you can wake up and join Zoom um, and pray with everyone. And then also in the evening, from Monday through Thursday, from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m., we have Bible study. And Bible study is on Zoom as well, so you don't have to come here to church. You can just join on Zoom. Um, if you just get off work, you can join and listen in and contribute. In Bible study, we are going through the book of 2 Corinthians, and I believe we're finishing up this week, so we'll start another book. And um, with Bible study, you can come with your questions if you have any questions. We'll dive through it verse by verse, chapter by chapter. So it's a good time if you have questions to ask questions um, about the scripture. And as well, on Fridays in the evening, we'll meet here at church from 6, 6 p.m. to 7.30 um, p.m. in the evening for evening prayer. Um, so we'll meet here in the church. We'll pray. We'll worship the Lord together um, on Friday, on Friday evening. <laughs> And then on Saturday morning, we have Bible studies from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. So Saturdays, we go through the Old Testament, and then through the week, we go through the New Testament. So make sure that you join on Saturdays as well, and not just only throughout the week, because Saturdays, it's been really powerful um, going through the Old Testament and having a lot of questions um, about the Old Testament as well. So Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., make sure that you join Zoom for our Bible studies. And then as well, on Saturday evening from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m., we have our children's church. So children's church um, is on Zoom. Um, so you can join on Zoom, have your kids log on, and um, there are different stories that we go through. And they also have memory verse that they have to remember. And then um, the next week they recite their memory verse. And then as well, along with children's um, church on Saturdays, on August 19th, um, from, ni from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m., we have our back-to-school drive coming up. So the back-to-school drive, you'll come, you get free book bags, free school supplies um, for the kids. So make sure that um, if you know anyone who needs any school supplies or any, um, anything that they need, book bags, um, school supplies, that they come and they get it. So invite your friends, your coworkers, um, even someone that you've just met, invite them to come so that they can also um, receive um, 
free school supplies. And we also have different activities um, going on throughout um, that time as well. So make sure that you're there. And on Saturday evenings from sometimes it's 4 o'clock in the evening or 5 p.m., depending on when um, um, Brother Munya posts in the church group chat. Um, so we'll go to the bus station. We'll go downtown Jerome to the bus station and as well to different places around on the street um, to do evangelism. So um, make sure that when he posts this in the church group chat that no one just uh, um, just miss it. Just make sure that you um, find time to go out and preach the gospel to everyone um, because that's what the Lord tells us to do, to go out and make disciples of all nations. We're all saved, so we want others to be saved too. We want our friends to be saved, our family members, strangers that are on the street. I want them to be saved as well. Um, so... And that's all the announcements for now, um, except we have the last announcement. We have our retreat coming up um, on from September 28th to October 1st, uh, where we'll go to Asheville um, in Ridgecrest at our conference center. And um, this is a three-day retreat where we pray, we fast, and we worship the Lord together. And we also do Bible reading as well. So just make sure that you, if you haven't registered, please register for the retreat before the, the rooms are booked. Um, so that you can, you won't want to miss this because this retreat and all the other retreats previously has been powerful. The presence of the Lord has definitely been with us every time that we meet there. Um, so make sure that you come um, to the retreat and um, you come ready to receive from the Lord. You come ready to receive um, everything that he has for you there. So make sure that you come prepare your hearts ready um, for the retreat. And I believe this are all the announcements for right now. So I'll call Pastor Hayford to do um, the communion. Amen. Amen. I hope you are doing very well. Next time, your ears will not be blocked again. So it is yet another Sunday, and God bless you all. If today is your first time being here, uh, we thank God for your life. I see one of my brothers that I, saw, I met him before. Brother Vincent, you're welcome. Yes. Um, it is yet another moment. I want us, we are going to have communion. And before we have this communion, and I always say it here, communion is one of the things that God is going to, is going to dine with us in heaven throughout. To all our stay in heaven, we are going to just be with God, eating. Okay, so those who think heaven won't eat, we're going to have fun with God in heaven. If you cannot dine with God over here, you cannot dine with him in heaven. You know, who, who believes that? Because what, what should prevent you from dining with God? nothing. So if there is anything that will prevent you from dining with God, then you have to make sure that you're going to work on that thing. If there is something that will stop you, then you got to work on it. If it is fear, work on fear. If it is sin, work on sin. If it is the devil pushing stuff into your ears, telling you that you are nobody, you got to rise up and overcome it. Amen. So we're going to, um, since you, got, you guys all have it, I will read a scripture for us to um, know the origin of it. In Luke chapter 22, the Bible says that <coughs> when the hour had come, he sat down and the 12, the 12 apostles with him. Then he said to them, with fervent desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I, I suffer. For I, shall, for I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. So I was reading this, you know, one thing that is coming in my mind. You know that it's not everyone who does some religions that they don't, you know, they don't, it, the congregation don't eat their communion. It's only the apostles who do that, right? They think it is the apostles 
who are fit to eat the communion. The members don't eat it. In active word church, that doesn't happen here. You are all qualified to dine with God. You are all qualified to do what? Dine with God. If you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you have surrendered to his authority and his leadership, and you've asked him to be in your heart, you are qualified to eat with him. The only thing that will prevent you will be you denouncing your faith or you saying that, look, I don't care about the body. I'll eat anyhow. Please don't eat anyhow. Some people eat, they ate it like with quarrels and they were fighting among themselves and being greedy over the food. Some were eating more than the other people because at first it wasn't like wafer. It wasn't evenly distributed. This one, it is evenly distributed. So let us open our heart for it. For I say to you, I will not drink of the, ca- of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he took, likewise also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shared for you. So we have covenant in the blood of Jesus. A covenant in the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is what has saved you. The blood of Jesus is what has paid for your sins. The blood of Jesus is what heals you. The blood of Jesus is a covering. The blood of Jesus is also a protection. You remember in Egypt, when we were in Egypt, the Bible says that um, the, the angel of destruction is going to kill all those who don't have the blood on their doorposts. But if I see the blood, I'll do what? I'll pass over you. So if I see the blood, that blood of Jesus Christ is what causes the devil not to touch you. Amen. Amen. Be upstanding. I want you to pick your communion. You're going to make a declaration. The Bible says that God has a covenant with us. Because of the blood of, 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 of the sheep, of, of sheep, lambs, the angel of destruction could not destroy the people of Israel. How much more the blood of Jesus Christ? So I want you to begin to make a declaration over your, your, your c- communion. I'm not going to tell you what to say. What you want to see, say it right now. There's power in your mouth. Just declare. Declare some blessings upon your life and your, your children. Tell God, God, as I take this in me, sanctify me. As I take this in me, empower me to do greater things. As I take your body and your blood in me, transform me. As I take your body and your blood in me, give me a new strength. In the name of Jesus, take sicknesses from me. If there is any chronic sickness, take it away from me. If there is any chronic sickness in you, that always take you to the hospital. Tell God that God, take it away from me. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now take the bread and then eat. It was broken for, for you. By his stripes you are healed. Amen. So as you take this bread in it, the stripes of Jesus Christ will heal you. And then second, we are going to take the fruit of the vine. The fruit of the vine. The blood of, signifies the blood of Jesus Christ. Drink it. And know that God has a covenant with you. Amen. A covenant that no devil can touch you. No demon can touch you. No power has power over you. What you have done today in the realms of the spirit is to let you know that you have authority over Satan. You have authority over demons. You have authority over any principality. You have authority over any forces in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, 
You've poured yourself in us right now. You've poured your presence in us. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Let this presence that you've poured in us give us liberty. Give us freedom. Give us protection. Give us new strength to do your work. New strength to read the word of God. New strength to pray. New strength to move in you. New strength to crush the devil. New strength to overcome sicknesses in the name of Jesus. Doors should be open unto us in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that God advance us and enlarge our territory and our coasts. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray thanksgiving. Amen. Please be seated. You all looking great today. Thank you. Every one of you. And Friday, oh my goodness, again, Friday was so beautiful. I've not seen Sister Hannah dance like that before. Me neither. That is what wedding will do. Amen. And it was so awesome, awesome to see all of you there. Those who couldn't make it, um, you see videos and you, you can really sync with us. Amen. I know you were with us in the spirit. So... God bless you all for coming, and God bless you also for your support, even from afar. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus. Today is the day you have made. We'll rejoice and be glad in it. We are so much grateful unto you. We appreciate you. We appreciate your love and your care for us. Have your own way in our lives, and come and speak to us today in Jesus' name. Amen. Beloved, today I want to talk to us about our destination after life. Our destination after what? If you are driving, you don't drive because you just you're a good driver, right? How many of us are good drivers here? No. <laughs> By God's grace, right? Some speed, some don't speed. Some are like, you know what? I'm super confident when I sit in my car. No one drives without having a purpose, a destination in mind. No one drives without having what? A destination in mind. So if someone hops in your car, or you hop in your, let's say I hop in your car, and I say, let's go. And you ask me, Pastor, Eva, where should we go? Where, where are we going? That would be the first question. Where are we going? So in life, we are all going somewhere. Whether you know where you are going or you don't know where you are going, you are going somewhere. Both believers and unbelievers, we have a destination. Amen. In the realms of the spirit, in the world of God, everyone will have to end somewhere in some time to come. So if we all have a destination, then we always have to talk about our destination. Where will we be? Someone say, oh, Pastor Hayford, it looks like this, this, this time we are always hitting like our destination, our destination. Why? Why? Yeah, we have a destination. And we'll go. We'll all go. You came to meet some people and they are gone. And the same way we also go. Some have gone ahead of us. Amen? My father has gone ahead of me. A time will come, it will also be my time. It will also be your time. All of us, it will be our time. So it is necessary to really sit down and think about the destination ahead of us. Where will you be? If it happens that it is your last day on earth. Where will you be if it happens that Jesus Christ has come today? Where will you be? Yesterday... Those of you who were able to join us for evangelism, we went out there, myself and Brother Munya and Sister Ariel, 
Big shout out to you all. We went to downtown to share the gospel. And this was a common question we asked a lot of people. Have you thought about where your soul will be if you die? This lady said, well, I don't want to think about it. People who don't believe in Jesus Christ, always when you ask them, do you know? So if right now you die, what will happen? Where do you think you'll be? I don't want to talk about it, and I don't want to think about it. I want to enjoy life. Then you ask, and uh, then we, we met this young lady. We asked her, she's like, I don't know. No one has told me, and I don't even want to know. Then we ask someone, so if it happens that today is your last day on earth, what will you do? She's like, well, when I die, I'll decompose, and that will be it. We couldn't get a single person to tell us that if I die, I'll go to heaven. Isn't it sad? It is very sad. Some poor people, there are so many, there are this event happening in downtown, and for some reason we didn't even know when we bump into it. We're like, oh God, thank you for this harvest. Thank you for the harvest. We are going to leverage this harvest. Then we started talking to people. We started talking to people. We met this lady. She's like, well, I believe in there's a higher power, but I don't think that higher power is God. Do you think we'll go somewhere? It's like, ah, I don't know. I believe I don't have such people here. If there's someone who doesn't know his destination, please, today you got to know your destination. Amen. Turn your Bibles to Luke chapter 16. Luke chapter 16. Luke 16. Verse 19 to the end. And this is not a parable. This is a true story that Jesus Christ said. A true story about someone. So there's some, some two people, their history, that is Jesus Christ is telling us. It's not everything in the Bible that is a parable. This one is not a parable. It's a true story. If not, then Jesus Christ would be a liar. Okay? So take it as a true story. Anytime you are narrating this to someone, it is a true story. Luke chapter 16, verse 19. I'm going to read from 19. There was a certain rich man who was clothed with purple and fine linen and fed sumptuously every day. But there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, full of souls, who was laid laid at his gate. 21. Desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked the sores. So it was that the beggar died and was buried and was carried by the eagles. Uh, sorry, by the angels, sorry, <laughs> by the angels to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. Two events happened here. The poor man died, and what happened? Angels came and carried him. A rich man died and was buried. There are people who want to be buried. And there are people who want to be carried to heaven. I pray that God will carry you to heaven. You will not just be buried like someone who has no hope. If you are just buried, it's just like you are, you are a waste. You have to be thrown away. It doesn't matter how beautiful your grave may be. Your grave can be the, the most beautiful grave in the world, overlaid with gold and everything. But without Jesus Christ, you'll be the most ugliest person ever or who has ever lived on to destruction. And being in torment in in Hades, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham um, afar off, Lazarus in his bosom. Then he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy 
on me and send Lazarus that he may dip his, the, the tip of his fingers in water and cool my tongue. For I am tormented in this flame. How can a drop of water quench a person's thirst? That shows that this pain that they were, he was in was what excruciating pain. In that he needs not a bottle of water, but a drop of what? Water. But Abraham said, son, remember that in your life, in your lifetime, you receive your good things and likewise Lazarus' evil things. But now he is comforted and you are tormented. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed. So that those who want to pass from here to you cannot. Nor can those from here pass to you. Then he said, I beg therefore, Father, that you will send him to my house, my father's house. For I have, found, uh, for I have five brothers that he may testify to them, lest they also come to this place of torment. Abraham said to, me, to him, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. So I believe around that time, Moses and some of the prophets were alive. They have what? Moses and the prophets. They have Moses and who? And the prophets. Jesus Christ was telling them a life word story, a story that ever happened. So there are people who believe that why will God use fire to destroy human beings? Why will God burn people in fire? This is a real story telling us the destination of two people. And he said, No, Father Abraham, but if one goes to them from the dead, they'll repent. But he said to him, If they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded Though one rise from the dead. If those of us here are telling you to give your life to Jesus Christ, and you don't want to hear us, it doesn't matter the person who comes from the dead. You will say it's a scam. So you will hear. Amen. So Abraham is like, I'm not going to waste my time to bring someone from the dead to come and talk to the living. We are the people that God is going to use to talk to the living that they give their life to Jesus Christ. We have this scripture, again, it is not just a story. It is not just a parable. A parable is just like making up something just to communicate with the people. This is something that happened. I just want to ask you, where will your life be if right now it happens that today is the last day on earth. Where will you be? If today you die, where will you be? Let me tell you something. Good things happen to everyone. The event of life happens to who? To everyone. Have you been under the, a, a tree before? If you stand under a tree and you look on the, on the ground, you see all kinds of leaves there. You see dry leaves, and you see some of the leaves that are green, true or false. You see some that are not green, they are also not brown, they are not dry, they are in between. The thing is that young people die, and old people die. The people that are in between also die. Now, if you're a child of God, death is not something you have to be afraid of. 
Because when you die as a child of God, you are not dead. You are sleeping. You are resting with God. So people of God, children of God, people who give their life to Jesus Christ, they don't die. If you accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you don't do what? You don't die. Now let me tell you something. If you have a car and you are driving, do you buy protection on the car? Insurance, right? Man, you can't have a Tesla and not have an insurance on it. Okay. You have Tesla and then you're like, okay, well, I don't want full coverage. You're like, really? Someone runs, if you run into someone, it is, it is you, your fault. The car gets damaged, it's, your, it's like no one is going to fix it for you. You don't want to do that. That is how life is. You, owe, you pay your premium where your, you value, your, your, you think the worth of your life is. Amen. There is life after death. And there is also damnation after death or condemnation after death. Do you believe that? The Bible says in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This looks like a common uh, scripture that is known to everyone. But it is one of the weightiest scriptures in the Bible. It is straightforward. If you give your life to Jesus, you will not perish. If you don't give your life to Jesus, you will perish. And I, I, lo I love God so much that he has made this scripture very common to the whole world. You meet someone, you start John 3, 16, and they, they continue for you. But it shouldn't just be a song in your ears. It should have meaning in our ears. Beloved, there is no time for every human being on earth. You don't have tomorrow. You have today. You don't have what? Tomorrow. You have today. Every day can be a, a last day in your life on earth. But how prepared are you? How prepared are you? How ready are you to meet Jesus Christ? This story is telling us that there are two men who live on earth. One was very rich. His, his whole life, he wants to wear good dresses. Put on apparels. Put on purple. He changes it. He lives his life flamboyantly. Okay. He says that he lives his life what? Sumptuously. That is, he was so flamboyant. He was so luxurious. Every clothe that comes, he's purchasing it. He got all his shoes. He, he, if it's Nike, it's Nike. Jordan is Jordan. Everything is like on him. He put a lot of investment on his body. His early living here. Look, let me tell you, trust. It's not only uh, uh, rich people who do that. Some poor people do that. There are some people who they don't have even what to eat. You see them every day wearing Nike, Jordan, all the Gucci. Uh, you know, uh, the, the belt is Gucci. Uh, the thing is Gucci. The shoes are Gucci. Everything is like all this expensive stuff on them. Some too, they don't have anything. They are the dress is not expensive. Nothing is expensive. Nothing is good on them. But here they still say they don't need God. Haven't you seen a poor person who, that, who has said they don't need God? Oh, me, I go for evangelism a lot with the team. So definitely, you see a lot of people. He got nothing, but he said he doesn't need God. So please, this scripture is not just referencing to a poor person, uh, only rich people. There are some rich people who are rich, but they reverence God. They are so much rich and they are so humble and they fear God. And there are some who are super, super, super poor. You go to them, look, Jesus is the only way. They are like, Jesus is what? I don't need that Jesus. Get out of my sight. The heart of human being is very hard. You know that? Sometimes we don't want to have Jesus to be the Lord of our lives. I remember last time I went to Walmart and I was doing a transaction over there and I, 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 spoke, to, um, I spoke to the, gent the, the, woman, the lady who was, uh, who was um, serving me. 
that no, Jesus is the only way. Jesus can save you. Jesus loves you. He said, I don't need Jesus to take, I don't need the, a God who will take my sins away. I want to be responsible for my own sin. Wow. This, is what the, this young lady, that's like, you don't need someone to be responsible for your sin. You want to be responsible for your own sin. She says, yes. Because I did it. If I mess up, I, 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 I need to be held accountable. I said, girl, you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> You don't know what you are talking about, okay? Um, if you want <laughs> to be responsible for your own sin and not surrender to Jesus, then you are in for something that is terrible. Okay. This lady didn't have anything, but it's like, it doesn't need Jesus. We all need Jesus. We all need who? Your career will pass away. Your money will pass away. Your cars will pass away. Your houses will pass away. The fame will pass away. The things you have will pass away. Oh, your certificate, it will burn like something. Because the certificate is, is paper. If your car, which is metal, is passing away, how much more your certificate that is paper? It will be consumed. Everything will be consumed. And we want, we have to set our heart on Christ. Amen. Lazarus here is a poor man. Now, I'm not going to zero in on only Lazarus. But let me tell you one thing. You remember, have you read um, Matthew chapter 5, verse 3? Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of what? Of heaven, right? Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now, if we say someone is poor in spirit, do you know who is a poor in spirit? Not someone who is wretched or wearing tattered clothes. No. Someone who has a contrite spirit. Someone who is broken in heart. Someone who is not proud and arrogant. Someone who is not really saying that, look, I, I mean, who hasn't seen before? Forget it. I can do my own thing. I don't need God. And today, there are a lot of people who are not poor in spirit in this world. Very, very proud. They're like, let me do my own thing. We don't need God. I don't need God. Please, we all need Jesus. We need Jesus. We need Jesus. And if we need Jesus, that means that if there is a need to repent and follow Jesus, we have to repent and follow Jesus Christ. Because a time is coming that we can, no one can stand the wrath of God. This poor man and this rich man, the Bible says that the rich man ate very well. He fed his belly. He had all their food. He had all their cars. He had everything. He had seven, two, you know. There are some, there are some people, when they eat, after they, they, before they eat, they stretch their hands. Someone wash their hand for them and wipe their hands for them before they put their, food, their hand in their food. And when they finish, they just have to stretch their hand for someone to wash it for them. Oh, you've not seen it before? Yeah, there are people like that. They are super, super uh, great in such a way that, you know, they eat. They, 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 if someone has to wash their hand left and right. Before they hold a knife and the fork and knife and they put food in their hands, they have all the luxury that they eat. If you want to live a luxurious life, please let Jesus be part of it so that you eat, you live that luxurious life too in heaven. Don't live luxury on earth and live poor in heaven. You know? Yes, thank you. If you live luxuriously on earth without Jesus Christ, you go and, and, and be in hell. Amen. So please, Jesus wants us to be in heaven with him. Jesus wants us to be in heaven with what? With him. Same way. The poor person was on earth here. Lazarus was here. He was eating from the crumbs of the rich man. The rich man was, have, had everything. But I know he was so prideful in such a way that his dog, he will even let his dog lick the sore of the poor man. See, sometimes we can get to a place where we are so, when, when, when we, you have riches, if you don't take care, you'll be super proud in such a way that when you're even doing the bad thing, you think it is right. No one can talk about you. No one can tell you what to do. No one can even order you. No one can correct you. No one can. You see, you are so proud. Pride. This, this man was super proud. 
No, if a person is super proud, no one can correct him or her. No one, not, not they themselves, their parents or anybody, not even a pastor can tell him what to do. But at the end of the day, if no one can correct you and you cannot, you, do, you won't need Jesus, a time will come that you will need Jesus. Church, let us always remain in a posture of humility. Amen. Let's remain in a posture of what? Humility. Because what is it that you have that it is not God who has given it to you? It's God. You don't mean 818. Everything that you have, God is the one that has given it to you. So that you enjoy life. Let us remain in what? In humility. Let us be poor in spirit. Let us be contrite in heart. Let us be closer to God so that when, it, when we do something, we can easily come to God and say, that, God, please, what I did, it's not right. It was wrong. So I'm sorry. And then God will forgive us. Let's continue. This is one char- another characteristic. So this is one thing that really was, was a struggle, was a problem with the rich man. The rich man loved the world. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 says, Do not love, 15, 16, and 17, Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. If you love the world and you love the pleasures of this world more than Christ, the love of the Father is not in you. You don't want that. For all that is in the world, the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. The world is passing away, and the last of it, by he who does the will of God abides forever. So anybody who does the will of God does what? Abides forever. If you don't do the will of God, will you abide forever? That means that if you don't do the will of God, when you die, you end up in eternal damnation. If you do the will of God and you die, you go to heaven. There is a place we all go. A time is coming that we all die. If you don't die, Jesus Christ will come and meet you here. When he comes and, and the trumpet sounds, when the trumpet sounds, those who are in Jesus, they will go. Where will you be? Ask yourself. If you know Jesus Christ, I want to encourage you like, like the, the poor man, like Lazarus. Lazarus gave his time and his everything to God. In his poverty, he still served God. Look, there are some people, when you go through a little bit of challenges, you're like, God, you know, forget about God. I, God, you, you know that you, you, you know uh, my state already and you are not helping me. So I'm going somewhere else. There are so many people who in their poverty have gone to the voodoo. They've gone to the other places for, 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 for help to, to the, um, uh, the spiritualists and all these kinds of people just because they need them to help them. In your poverty, still stay in God. Even if you don't have anything, abide in God. Because God is going to save you. Amen. Amen. If you are rich, still abide in God. Nothing that you have can save you. The only thing that will save you is Jesus. It's Jesus. A time will come that Jesus will come. Jesus will come. Jesus will come. Jesus will come. You remember what Jesus said? Moses is there preaching to them. The prophets are there preaching to them. Maybe Jeremiah, uh, uh, I said Jeremiah was there preaching. Uh, all these people were preaching. Elijah was preaching. And yet this rich man and his family will not listen. Today too, we are preaching. And like pastors are making too much noise. We are preaching. Oh, look, I forget about this evangelist. They are making too much noise. We are preaching. We are preaching. We are preaching. We are preaching. Some of you, your mothers and your fathers and mothers are preaching to you. Some of you, your sisters, your cousins, your aunties, your siblings are preaching to you. Some of you, a lot is being said to you, but you still wouldn't want to listen. Let us open our ears to the Lord. Let's open our ears to who? To the Lord, because he will come again. There are some messages today, when you preach them, it's like it is old message. I'm telling you, those are the <laughs> messages that you want to hear. Amen. Amen. These are the messages we have to hear. Because when everybody is telling you, oh, flashy things, everything, and you, you love it. The Bible says that people gave themselves to marriage, to parties, to having fun. And before they realize, Jesus Christ 
had come. Today, do you know what is trending? A lot of marriages. Everyone wants to marry by hook or crook. Right? Oh, I might lie. Is it not true? You want to grab yours right now. So there are things that has become so much our soul, the, the soul, our soul, is not what comes first in our lives. What comes first is either, oh, let, 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 let's be great first. Let me get this. Let me get that. Let me get that. Let me get that. There's, no, there's nothing wrong with it. But every day, let our soul be put first. Put your spiritual life, what? First. Put where you be first. I'm telling you, look, if you are going to pronounce your vows and Jesus Christ comes and you don't know Jesus Christ, I'm telling you, you forget. If Jesus Christ comes and you don't know, and you are standing there, and the pastor officiating is gone, and it's left with you, probably maybe the man is gone or the woman is gone, and the people who are going to witness are gone, I don't know how you're going to feel. Or you are in your bed with your husband and then one is taken away and then one is left behind. You're like, oh, where is he? Where is he? Where is he? <laughs> or where is she? I'm telling you, there is a place we are going to go. There is a place that we'll go. You want to go with your siblings. You want to go with your church members. You want to go with your husband. You want to go with your wife. A time happened that the poor man died and the rich man died. They all died. They all did what? Died. When they died, the difference between the two of them is that one spent good life on earth. And one, it was evil for him on earth. But when the rich man, the poor man died, the angels came and got him because he belongs to who? God. The one you belong to will send a dispatch for you if he dies. So if a rich, if, if, uh, if, if a Christian dies, angels will come and escort you to God. The same way, if an unbeliever dies, Satan has his angels that will come and hold you and they will tell you that this is your destination. You got to choose one. Make your choice whilst you're on earth here. It doesn't take a lot of effort to know Jesus. It doesn't take a lot of effort to be in heaven. The same way it doesn't take a lot of effort to be in hell. Because you can chill, you can do everything, you can just close your ears and say, forget about it. And that will be an easy way to just push you, escalate you to hell. But today, the good news is that Jesus Christ is calling you. There are a few things that the rich man, the rich man did. The rich man, after, after he ended in destruction, let me tell you something. He was remorseful. Have you heard people saying that, oh, yeah, when we go to hell, we'll meet all these Bob Marley and we'll meet all these uh, great people in hell and we're going to dance with them. So forget about it. They make mockery of us Christians. Oh, don't worry. If I go to hell, I'll meet those who have gone ahead of me and there's going to be a lot of party in hell. There's no party in hell. There's no what? Party in hell. Those in hell that you think they have fame and they ended there, if they had a chance, they would tell you don't go there. If they had what, the chance, they would tell you don't do what? Don't come here. What did the man say? The first thing that the man says is that, he says that, um, let, let, let's, let's just go, uh, <clears throat> verse 23 says that, and being in torment in hell, he lifted up his eyes and one, he told Abraham to do what? To send Lazarus to bring him water. To drink. Now, there is a place of torment. Hell is a place of torment. Um, there are some people, like the Jehovah's Witness people will come to you and tell you that um, there is no hell. 
There's no such a thing like that. When the Bible talks about hell, it is Gehenna, uh, which is uh, the grave. That's what they will tell you. Uh, Shoel, that is the grave. And that is how they will interpret it to you. Please, hell is real. Heaven is real. It is a place. A um, couple years ago, the Lord opened my eyes to see the structure of hell. It was structured like, you see how the human part is? It is structured like a bean. And it has cells in it. Now, if you read Revelations chapter 20, I believe, verse 15, it says that hell and Hades will be put in the, um, hell in the lake of fire. So hell or Hades is not the final destination of, of the people who are, who are dead already. Okay, it's, it's not the final destination. Now let me read Revelation chapter, Revelation chapter uh, 20 verse 11 through 15 to you. Then I saw a great white throne and he who sat, who, who sat on it, from those from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. And books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works. The dead were judged according to what? So the rich man was judged according to his work. The poor man was judged according to his what? His works. By the things which the by the things which were written in the books, the sea gave up the dead who were in it. And death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them. Get it? The word. Then death and what? And Hades were cast. Oh, no, don't go there right now. <laughs> Okay, they gave us, they gave up what was in it. Then the fourth, he says that death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. So death here is personified, right? And Hades, and it was cast into what? The lake of fire. That would be the final destination of a person. So this rich man, that is, 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 is Jesus is saying his story, he is still in Hades. He is still there. He is still in torment. As we are talking right now, he is still in torment, okay? Because it's an everlasting place that is going to be forever until God will finally pick it up and throw it in what? In the lake of fire. No one would want to have to go there. No one. No one. No one here. And look, there is a lie that some people say, oh, well, don't worry. If Jesus comes and I don't go, I will have chance for the tribulation. The tribulation, I won't take the mark of the beast so that I can make it. You cannot stand it. So don't wait for the day of tribulation. Don't wait for the day of what? Because you cannot do what? Stand it. If there is a day, today is the day. I'm not frightening you. I'm telling you, if you're a child of God, be happy that you, when you die, you go to heaven. Because you're a child of God, please keep the consistency. Don't stop what you are doing in God. Don't stop what you are doing in what? In God. Don't stop praying. Don't stop living right. Don't stop. Don't give your life to the world. No. Keep pushing with God. No matter how hard life may be, keep staying with God. Stay focused. Keep staying fo consistent. It doesn't matter. Even if you are serving God and because of God, they are going to fire you. It is better for you to be fired than to compromise and give, your, give up your faith for the sake of earthly things. Please be constant with God. Amen. Be constant with who? With God. Let nothing separate us. The apostle says, what shall, who shall separate us from the love of God? Let nothing, nothing on earth do what? Separate you from God. Because if you end up in a wrong destination, oh, you will regret it. It is better for a human being not to have been born than to be born and end up in hell. If you were not born... You, you, you know, it's better because that way you don't know any pain. But as long as you have been born, your destination, make everything possible to go to heaven. And it is easy. Give your life to Jesus and present your life as a living sacrifice unto God. I 
I'm going to run through this very little bit quick, so please follow me. One, the rich man was remorseful. If a person ends up in hell, they'll be remorseful. You, because you know, you know that, ah, why did I end here? Okay, why? Why? You will see, you will see. He was remorseful seeing what righteous and the, ungod- the godly people that he despised. So you are going to know that, ah, this man, I despise him. That woman, I despise him. Oh, hey, yeah, I was there when Pastor Hefford came to me and was telling me and I didn't give my life. To- oh, this man, I remember South Point, he, he talk, he, they spoke to me. Oh, but, oh I remember the, the, those group of people. They were there in a parade thing and they were preaching and we didn't like it. You will remember. Anybody who ends there, they will remember how they, get, you, they got there too. They will hate the very thing that led them to their condemnation. Okay? Today when people are drinking, fornicating, doing all kinds of things, we tell them to stop and they are like, who hasn't seen before? Give your life to Jesus. They're like, eh, me, I don't need to have to give my life to Jesus. I'll do my own thing. That day, you remember that you did this and that and that and that and that and that. And that is what has led you there. So you will hate the very thing that took you there. You will hate the decision of not as you you hate the very decision that you did, you took not accepting Jesus Christ. You will hate it. Because you're going to remember the time that those evangelists came to you. You remember the, the YouTube video that he had and you, 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 tune it, you tune out of it. You're going to remember the preacher that you hated because he always tells you to give your life to Jesus. You're going to remember. So please, today we have the chance to give our life to Jesus. In hell, you have the desire to do what is right, but it will be too late. You don't want to do the right thing here. In hell, you have the desire to do what is right. Because the rich man, he knew that where he was, he was, was torment, right? And he said, oh, well, please, can you let someone go and preach to my, my siblings? I have five of them. Let me go and preach to them. The desire to do right is to send someone from here today. I don't even know if he wants to be the one going to preach so that he'll get it right and go to heaven. You get a desire to do what? To do what is right, but it will be too late. To be too late. You remember the opportunities of being saved. I said you remember the opportunity of what? All the opportunities. Oh, give your life to Jesus. You know, some people will even buy you food to give your life to Jesus. You know that? The missionaries, you know what they do? For them to get their, their, their message across, they will do boreholes for people. They will send them food. They will send them clothes. They will send them everything. Some will even go out of their way and talk to you. And you're like, oh, no, 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 no. I, I, I don't want you guys. You know, go, go, go. I remember if you go and talk to someone, have you been rejected before? Uh, uh, please, can, can, uh, do I have a moment to talk to you about Jesus Christ? Then they're like, uh, this man did something to me that, uh, that, that this one, he, didn't even, he just pocketed and just looked at me like this. And he left. That day, if that man doesn't get saved, and he dies and he ends there. He will remember me. And he will remember the very place we were. Please, today is the time. You are, then the next thing is that they will, you, they will regret the evil deeds that they did. All the evil deeds. That's the reason why in hell, the torment will be real. All these things is going to pounce torment on you. But remember where, if, even as we are here right now, if you do something wrong, and something you're like, ah, I wish I could have done this right. I, I, if I had written this exam, if I had done this, if I had done that, I would have gotten this thing. It, it puts some, some burden on you, right? If you knew that, oh, if I had done this, I would have gotten this, and you didn't do it, and that opportunity comes and passes by you, you feel it. In, heaven, in hell, the same way, it will happen. The feel of hopelessness, 
of not being able to escape from eternal damnation. The people would like to do what? Like to escape. But you cannot do what? Escape. You feel hopeless and helpless. Helpless. Please, no one should end up there. It is easy to go to heaven, please. It is easy to do what? It is easy to do what? It is easy to do what? To go to heaven. You know why? You just have to say, Lord Jesus, I surrender my heart to you. I want to give you everything. Just come into my life and be the Lord of my life and I want to follow you. That is very easy. You don't have to pay anything. A person who ends up in that um, hell will regret over their, their, their bad deeds and even how they live their life. They will feel eternal separation from their loved ones. You know, this man said, I have five brothers. But now he is in hell. He feels the separation. So you feel separation. If your father goes to heaven and you end up in hell, you're going to feel it. If, if a family member goes to heaven and you end up in hell, you feel it. So if you want to be with your auntie, you want to be with your cousin, you want to be with your, your, with your, with your husband, with your wife, yes, now it's going to look at the white husband. It's like, hey, Chris, you can't go to heaven and leave me behind, okay? <laughs> we are going together. You will feel your, your loved ones. I wouldn't want Kezia to go and leave me. Hey. We all have to be there. By hook or crook, we, go, we have to be there. Amen. I, would, I want to see you all in heaven. I want to see you all in heaven. The, the, other, the last verse one said, they will feel very deep remorse. They, they, they will be deeply remorseful for not listening to the word of God and obeying. Amen. Because the word of God will be ringing in your ears. As you are there, ah, they told me give my life, I should give my life to Jesus, but I didn't do that. And so you'll be remorseful towards that. They will feel the fire and the brimstone. That's the final one. You'll feel the word, the fire and the brimstone and the worms that eats your body but never dies. There is a destination for all of us. This is not our home. This place is not our what? Our home. A time will come that you will go to God or you go to wherever you belong to. But the decision is on you to give your life to Jesus. This is one of the lovely messages you can ever have, I'm telling you. Okay? This is the most lovely messages you can ever have. Someone telling you that I want to help you get a visa to God. And that is the message I brought to you. The visa is ready. Are you ready to give your life to Jesus? If you know Jesus, stay focused. If you know Jesus, be happy that you meet Jesus very soon. If you don't know Jesus, please, it is not too late to give your life to Jesus. Let us be upstanding. Let us be upstanding. There's going to be an action word, over um, action point here. If you're a child of God, please don't stop following Jesus. If you don't know Jesus, don't be shy to give your life to Jesus. Because no one knows tomorrow. This is not um, frightening you, but no one knows tomorrow. Every second, someone is dying in the world. You don't know when it will be your turn. I want you to pray and tell God that, God, please help me be consistent with you. Like Lazarus was consistent with you. Even in his pain, he was so consistent. I want to be consistent. If you don't know Jesus, tell God that, Lord Jesus, I need you to be in my heart. Lord Jesus, I need you to be in my heart. Lord Jesus, I need you to be in my heart. Come and make your home in my heart. Because a time will come that Jesus will come very soon. Jesus will come again. Jesus will come again. Jesus will come. He's coming. 
He is coming. He is coming quickly with his reward to give unto everyone according to their works. He is coming. Revelation chapter 22 verse 12 says, I am coming quickly with my reward with, with me to give unto everyone according to their works. Pray and tell God, oh God, I want to be consistent with you. Because if the day comes, the day comes, the day comes, you want to remember the good things that God has done with you. In the name of Jesus, you want to be happy. You want to be happy. You want to be happy. You want to be among the saints who be in heaven. You want to be among the saints who be in heaven. Pray and tell God, oh God, I want to be strong in you. I want to build a deeper relationship with you. I want you to come in my heart right now in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. If you don't know Jesus, all this message that has come, I want you to, and you want to give your life to Jesus, just lift up your hand a little bit for me. And then tell God that God, I just want to surrender unto you. Or in your heart, you're going to pray. If you want to come forward, we'll pray for you. Because no one knows the end. No one knows anybody's end. Just as the rich man died, the poor man also died. And all of them had a destination and they all went to their final destination. The rich man ended up in, in hell. The poor man ended up in, in heaven. Every human being has their final destination. You have a destination. Where will you be right now if you consider yourself? Where will you be? Don't wait and get to a place and say that, ah, it is too late for me to come ba back. Today is the time. Today is the time. If you don't know Jesus, pray this prayer uh, with me. Say, dear Lord Jesus Christ, I need you. Today, I know without you I cannot be saved. I may have walked in my own ways. But I need you, Jesus. Jesus, come and live in my heart. Jesus, come and dwell in me. Jesus, come and have your way in me. I want you to be the Lord over my life. From today going, I give up all my sins. All the control I have, I give it unto you. Just come and be the Lord over my life. I don't want to die and go to hell. I need you. So come into my heart and make your way in my heart. In Jesus' name, amen. I want you to pray and commit your, yourself into the hands of God. Tell God that God, preserve me. Let your blood be a covering on me. Let nothing evil befall me in the name of Jesus. Be a covering over me. This week, cover me. Cover my children. Make your abode with us in the name of Jesus. Make your abode with us. In my driving, in everything, be with me. I want to be consistent with you. Lord, I want to know you. I want to walk with you in the name of Jesus. I want to be consistent with you, so be with me. Father, I want to be with you in heaven in the mighty name of Jesus. So help me stay focused and consistent with you in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done in Jesus' name. Amen. May the peace of God be with you. May God be a covering over you and overshadow your life. I pray that the grace of God be with you. The love of God be with you. Let the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Be kept by the power of God unto the coming of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen.